Yeah, I was just checking out this great Chris Potter interview that was put out by Smalls, uh, the Jazz Club in New York, as a podcast. They did a number of interviews with some great players here in the New York area. And this one was by Chris Potter. And I'll put the link in the comments for sure. And one thing that was really great was uh, about 12 minutes in, he talks about uh, learning by listening. And I wrote down a couple things he said. Uh, a lot of the beginning of it is discussing his various teachers. It's pretty interesting how he came to learn, how each person brought a different way of teaching, and what he got the most out of. And he mentions Red Rodney, who he toured with when he was a young man, and that how much he learned just on the job training, basically, watching how he ran the gig, did a set, all those kind of things. So some of the things he says, uh, if, if he's interested, he says, if you're interested in a particular learning, a particular type of music, listen a lot, which is, seems obvious, but sometimes uh, when you're trying to learn uh, jazz improvisation, I know that people, I know myself when I first started, I was sort of enthralled with the books and looking for information that was already gathered for me. And basically he's saying you're going to gather it yourself. Listen a lot, pick out salient points, in essence, what makes this person sound different from other people compared to the what you already know? He refers to it as your signposts of your own knowledge. So, and you know, I feel that's really important to look at something and be able to formulate an opinion on it based on what you know. Say, uh, I've said this before. Say, I like this because it's a lot of notes, or this this is more notes than I normally would play. This is longer notes. This is high. This is loud. This is soft, slow, fast. Be able to, to discuss it and compare it to stuff you already know, and that will then expand out. The other thing he said was, um, I thought was interesting, was he liked to play along with the records first, and he treated it like a language first, kind of like someone would learn, as opposed to going right to the books. He said, to get the sound in your ear, and that's all tied into listening. And um, getting the sound, learning it like a language. Because he said he always thought of it as something you hear and imitate as opposed to something that you read and write first. You know, and I and uh, you know, I play with a lot of great musicians who didn't read and write music at all and had great ears because of that. And they had great uh, ability to remember things because they never wrote anything down, so they had to remember it. Or they would tape it, just listen back to it to refresh their memories. But I think that that I know for myself, I could buy a stack of different books about improvisation, but I learned a lot more when I transcribed a bunch of things myself. And, and I learned, actually, it showed me which books were really telling me what information was actually in the written solos, the solos that I transcribed. And some of the books the information, the take on the information was sort of, it was all there. It's all kind of the same information, but sometimes it's doled out in a different um, fashion, a different order. Anyway, it's a fan, it's a very fascinating interview. I like to listen to these things, go back and revisit them and, and listen to them over and over because it's, it's basically like taking a lesson with the person because many lessons aren't just saying, someone saying, well, when you see this, you should do this. It's, it's really hearing how they approached it and developing your own personal approach. So like I said, I'm going to put the link to the interview down there. I suggest you go listen to it. I got a lot out of it. I'm going to listen to it again. Take it easy.